Hello, today we're doing an interview with Dr. Victoria Niest, who is a sign language linguist at Leiden University Center for Linguistics. And she's going to explain to us all about sign languages and why they're such interesting topics of research. So first, could you maybe introduce your field of research? What is it that you do? Right. So my uh, field of research is um, uh, well, sign languages, as you just mentioned. Um, sign lang linguists study the structure, the linguistic structure of sign languages mm. as used by deaf communities all around the world. My main focus is on uh, sign languages used in Africa um, and uh, taking a, a cross-linguistic perspective on that. Okay, so when you say sign languages used in Africa, that means that there are also other sign languages, for example, used in Europe. So there's not just one sign language that everybody uses. No, right. That's a, a common uh, misunderstanding that mm. many people have, that there would be one universal sign language, and they're usually a bit disappointed to hear that that's not the case. But actually, um, there is a lot of variation, just like uh, with spoken languages. And so we see that spoken languages um, have a multitude of, of uh, different structures, and the same holds for sign languages, which may differ in their lexicon or their phonology, morphology, syntax, etc. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, one of the videos in our MOOC. We we also spoke about phonology, the phonology of spoken languages, and we saw that um, spoken languages are built up from sounds. So these are the building blocks. But how does this work for sign languages then? Yes. Uh, well, perhaps surprisingly, we also talk about phonology um, oh. in the context of, of sign language linguistics. Why is that? So on the one hand, of course, uh, many people are surprised because phonology uh, contains the word phonos, sound, yeah. and obviously, uh, being used by deaf people, sign languages do not majorly depend on sound as, as uh, distinctive units. Um, but we do see the same kind of systematic use of uh, abstract building blocks. Mm -hmm. um, whereas uh, spoken languages use sounds, sign languages use what we call parameters. Uh, that are that are uh, articulated simultaneously, mm. and these parameters are the hand shape that is used to articulate the sound, the movement that the hand makes in the articulation of the sign, um, the location. Where is the hand located? Is it located in space, on the body, on the head? Um, also, the orientation of the hand. So, do the fingers point upwards or to the front? What about the orientation of the palm? That can also be distinctive. And lastly, also, the non-manual features like uh, facial expressions or particular mouth movements like puff cheeks or um, different kind of uh, facial expressions can also be distinctive. Hmm. So these parameters are um, phonemic in sign languages in the sense that, like sounds, they can be distinctive. So um, when we look at uh, minimal pairs in spoken languages, we see that sign languages have equivalents, mm -hmm. but then um, differing only in one parameter. So could you give an example of that? Yes, um, I can give an example of uh, a sign language I've been studying extensively in West Africa, Adamobet sign language, uh, in Ghana. This sign language has a, a sign for snail and a sign for snake, which are very similar, but differ only in one parameter, the handshake parameter. Mm -hmm. So the sign for snail and the sign for snake, uh, I'll show them to you and you, you can see what the difference is. So the sign for snail looks like this, mm -hmm. and the sign for snake looks like this. Okay. Well, I can so guess you can index. see it's the, the difference in hand shape, right? So we mm. have a fist and an extended index, and that generates this difference in meaning, uh, distinguishing snail from snake. Okay. And. Um, if we look at spoken languages and sign languages, uh, what, is, what is it that makes sign languages uh, special? What do, can sign languages show us that spoken languages cannot, maybe? Right, yeah, that's a, that's a very uh, important question. Um, there are many issues that are, are similar in, in sign languages, many phenomena that are similar in spoken language and sign languages. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, there is one very important crucial point that sign languages can uh, add, con contribute to the field of linguistics. And that's basically what is the effect of modality on language structure. So over the past decades we've been focusing on spoken languages, 
we've been studying universals, uh, tendencies, etc. In, in spoken languages. But now, when we start looking at sign languages, we get a whole new, uh, this opens a whole new window on uh, how human language functions mm -hmm. when it is when it passes through a different channel. And you said earlier that you, your focus of research lies mainly with African languages. Yes. Are there differences between African sign languages and European sign languages with respect to this iconicity, uh, yes, what you yes, just yes. talked about? So um, I guess that's one of the reasons why I got drawn to this uh, su subject, um, because I noticed there were, there seemed to be uh, different tendencies going on in West African sign languages on the one hand mm -hmm. and, uh, for example, European sign languages on the other. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the things is that, that often you have more than one option to iconically depict an object. So take, for example, a bottle. How would you use your hands to depict a bottle? Well, one of the ways would be to trace the outline in space. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the round hand shape um, shows that the object is round, the upward movement shows the extent of the bottle, and um, well, so you, you get an idea of, of a bottle, right? Mm. You trace the outline in space. Another way uh, would be to, to embody that size and shape. So, for example, like this, mm. there you see that the forearm kind of embodies or becomes the bottle. So, those are two different options. So, I, on the one hand, outlining, and on the other hand, uh, embodying or becoming the object. Now, if we look at uh, West African sign languages, um, it seems that uh, the embodiment strategy is kind of more popular, is the preferred one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the outline strategy is used much less as compared to uh, sign languages of European origin. So there is a marked difference there. And uh, yeah, that, I think it's a... Um, well, that's a Topic I'm currently working on. Yeah. So then, um, one final question that I'd like to ask is that when I'm talking to you and when everybody's talking, we're doing, we're making gestures. movements, yeah, gestures with our hands. Is that also sign language? And is there a relationship between what I do and, like, for example, Dutch sign language? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's really a, a very uh, uh, hot topic, actually. Uh, in sign language linguistics now. For a long time, the, the, the area of gesture studies and sign language studies, these fields were quite separate. Mm -hmm. And um, because both of them were quite new, I guess, now these uh, fields have matured a little bit and now we start looking at the overlap between the two. So what is actually, what do they share? Where is the difference? Um, and personally, I'm, I'm uh, again interested in, in the mm -hmm. use of iconicity also in, in, the, in the gestures of hearing speakers and uh, for that purpose I've also been looking is there a kind of gestural correlate or a gestural explanation for the difference between West African sign languages and European sign languages so this kind of dispreferral for uh, outlining in space mm -hmm. is there a gestural explanation for that in the, the gestures of new speakers mm -hmm. so we've been interviewing speakers of three West African languages and we found that uh, whereas European speakers, uh, for example, French and of, of Dutch, typically have one strategy, which is showing the size and shape of an object in space. Mm -hmm. West African speakers tend to have two options. Either they show in space, or they show the size and shape of an object on the part of a, on the, on the body part, um, like this. Mm. So there appears to be a clear difference in uh, the gestural strategies of hearing speakers and uh, somehow uh, there may be a relation there um, or a kind of causal effect on the structure uh, of iconicity in sign languages. Okay. Thank you very much for this interview. Uh, thank you for explaining some things about what sign linguists do. And if you would like to know more about that, we'll post some background reading for you to have a look at. And we'll see you in the next video. So thank you for having me here. Um, I would be really uh, curious to know from all of the viewers to what extent they recognize the use of um, body-based size and shape gestures. So 
Are you uh, familiar with this, this kind of system? Did you see other people use it or do you use it yourself? Please share with us uh, on the forum. Thank you.